Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be teaching all of you how to make a good level. Okay? Because a lot of people, no offense to literally everybody, but not everybody knows how to make a good level. And I'm going to teach you the basics of every single block, how to use them correctly, and what scenarios you would use them in. Also, level design, um, environmental design, a bit of sculpting. I'm not very good at sculpting, so I may have my friend come in and maybe teach you a bit about sculpting. But, you know, for this episode, I'm teaching you basic level design. Basic, basic, basic. So we're gonna, first we're gonna go over all different types of blocks. So, first we're gonna start with position and rotation, because that's like the easiest stuff. So position snap is where your position is on the board. So like, I have this here, and I stretch it out. I can't, I can only move it in certain positions. I'm not gonna be using position snap. I do not like position snap. Rotation snap, you, if you put it to 90, it'll not move. It's very useful. You could stretch out blocks, turn it like this, rotate it, and that's about it you can do with it. You can also do it like that, and like that. Now, 45 degrees is a bit different. It's like 90 degrees, but with an extra rotation. Very useful, especially for things like doing this. If you need that to be done in your map. But right now we do not need that to be done. There's also a, there's like a bunch of in between ones like 30, which is also useful. There's five, which is extremely useful whenever you're trying to get critiquing builds. And there's 15, which is also nice. It's like a nice solid snap to have. So the first thing we're gonna want to do in the level is I'm gonna want I'm going to take both of these down and I'm gonna keep the spawn. Now I'm going to teach you a quick trick with the spawn before we start. So this arrow is where the spawn's pointing. You can, whenever, like, you can put those spawn anywhere. But also I'm going to teach you about zero zero. So if you delete the spawn and then respawn in character mode, put a block right here. That is the zero zero of the level, which means if you, this is the zero zero of the level. So whenever you spawn in, you'll spawn on this block. So you can have it so like the ground is right here and you do not have a spawn point. But to keep it simple, right now we are going to use just a spawn like that. Now let's go through the level blocks in order, shall we? All right, so there's a lot of blocks, as you can see. Um, so let me line them up a bit better. Alright, so, I've made different categories of blocks here. So, over here, so let's, let's explain with this. This is the most simple concept. So this is ice, whenever you land on it, you slide, right? Uh, this is lava. If you touch it, you die. Pretty self-explanatory. We're going to maybe use these later, put it over here. These are the grabbable blocks, kind of. So these are the two main grabbable blocks that you have. You can grab both of them perfectly fine with no issue. Different textures. These, we're gonna put these over here. These are grapple blocks. These you can grapple onto. This one is a grabbing one. You cannot grab this one. And if you touch it, you will die. But they are both grabbable. These are decorative blocks that you cannot, you cannot grab or you can't climb them, you can't grapple them, they're just decorative blocks. I'm gonna teach you how to use these in your builds later. Now these are the special blocks. These all have special features, including the spawn. Spawn is also one of these blocks. So the spawn, of course, will spawn you. The end zone will end the level, so whenever you're beating the game, whenever you enter the zone, the game will end, and you will have to beat. The level will be beaten. 
this is a breakable block. Basically, it's this, but you can break it. So let me explain. If you touch it, it will break. We'll get more into the critiques of that later. It's very soon. I'm just explaining the basics right now. This is a sign you can write on it. I will, ex and with this pencil, you can write whatever you want on it, and then place it in different areas. I'll explain different tricks with that sign. Bouncy blocks, okay. These are also a really cool block. Basically, if you touch it, you bounce. Yeah, that's the whole thing about the bouncy blocks. Now, let's get into the fine details on how you can use these blocks to make a nice map. First, starting off with this block. This is the color block, basically the only decorative block in the entire game of Grab. And if you wanna make your level look truly nice, you're gonna use this. And you're probably like going, what? This doesn't look nice at all, it's just white. Okay, let me explain. If you open your menu while touching this block with your hand, you can go to selection. You'll have a lock feature. We're going to talk about that later. And you'll see all of these colors and you'll see a type down here. You'll also see selection two. Let's talk, and we'll talk about that later. That's level complexity. So if you press that, that's, it'll change the color of the block. That's why it's called color changing block. Very useful. This typing is neon. So you can change it to neon, which will make the color brighter and Yes. So let's talk about complexity. If you take a block and you select it, you'll have two complexity. If you double that block, you'll have 30 complexity because it takes up two complexity. If you do it again, you'll have selecting four. You'll be selecting eight. And that'll be 34 complexity. So I have 3000 complexity because I'm a verified creator. But as of now, as I'm recording this video, you, whenever you first start grab, will have 1500 complexity to build a level with. So that's what I'm going to try to level myself with. I'm going to try to build a map with 1500 complexity so I can help you. Easier. Let's talk about this. This is a breakable block. You can change the stable time on how long it takes until it breaks and how long it takes to respawn it. They're very, very useful. Peace. And basically all these blocks are the same let's talk about uh let's talk about locking next and grouping so if you grab if you hold down your trigger and then pull your thing like look you can see this way i'm holding my trigger which is making this red dot and then i'm pulling it this way which makes big ball so this if you hang this ball over here it'll like make these like one block basically, and you let go, you'll be able to move this. But if you let go of it, like clicking the trigger and making sure it's like in position, it won't do anything. So you grab it, and you have two options now that you've grabbed both of these. You can lock it or you can group it. Let's talk about locking first. Locking, so if you lock an item, you cannot grab it no matter what you do. You have to unlock an item and then you can lock, you can grab it again. Grouping basically essentially makes it one block. So even if you let go, you, it'll still be block together yeah so that's grouping and locking now let's talk about the sign trick which i love using in my maps so let's make a simple example so if you put like something like hello into a sign and it doesn't so like imagine you're making a level it's immersive and then you just have this here it doesn't fit the map so an easy way to fix this solution is you push this block to the point where it's very close to the thing so only the text will appear on it and you can group this and you can move it around and it'll work as a sign and you can ungroup it you can edit the sign while it's in the block you can edit the block while it's in the sign and it works as this cool little thing so i'm going to talk more about tips and tricks with the color block because it makes things look really nice Let's use another color block. Like for example, we're gonna take this block right here. So if you take this block and then put it like that, and line it up pretty well, push it in so it's invisible, you'll have a grabbable block that is colored. So I said I couldn't, you couldn't do this before, but you can indeed do it. The same thing goes for grapple blocks. Now, it works a bit differently for grapples. So 
well, for mostly. So for this grapple, it works exactly the same. If you mold it to the grapple, then it will work exactly the same. You'll just be able to grapple the block. It's very useful. It's very good for aesthetics. Next, grapple block is important. If you put this in here, of course, I'm not trying my hardest. I'm just trying to make a good example. You put this, the other grapple block, you were able to grab. This one won't kill you whenever you come on impact with it. But also, you can't grab, you can't grab it. And by the way, these tricks go for every, almost every single block. I'll explain that later. So like, if you wanted to, you could take this block, and you could put this block inside of it. And then you'd be able to grab this, grab this block. And same with the grapples. So, let's talk about ice and lava. And this, and this. These are important to this trick. Because if you don't know this, you're going to get really confused. Now, if you try to do this with ice, since ice is a surface material that acts whenever it touches on the surface, doesn't have a special ability, you will not slide on this ice. You will not slide on it. Same with the lava block and the bouncy block. If you put this over the lava, you will not die. I know it sucks, but it's true. If you put this on the bouncy block and land on it, you will not bounce. For this breakable block, if you put this here, let's reduce the time so I can actually show you a good example of it. Put this here and then you grab it. Hold on, give me a second. So, if you grab this, it'll break, but you won't be able to see the breakingness if you do it properly. So, those are all of the basic, very, very basic tricks with blocks. Now, we're going to talk about level design for a level. And I'm going to make a level with you over this series where you can publish an actual level where it'll look nice. So, let's talk first about a good spawn point. So, something that I struggle with a lot is scale, player scale. So, let us do something about that. Put a piece at where, you th where your forehead is, and then take off. You will see that you have to grab character size, put that there, and then cap that off right there. That is a player size model. I may have messed up a bit. Yes, I did. Give me a second. But this is a player size model now. So now you have a model for your player. And yeah, that's how you know your player's measurement. So you can model things to the size of the player. Like you can model a door to the size of the player. Like that. You can model a door to the size of the player. You can model a flashlight just doing some very simple constructions of different things here you can do a flashlight to the size of a player that may be a bit too big a flashlight to the size of a player whatever you want so now that you have your player scale let's make a starting room i am going to make what should i make i am going to make a house exploration maybe not i'm gonna make a what do you call it i'm gonna make a parkour level based around jumping why not let's do this so we're another trick okay so what i'm gonna start with is this is your starting room Make sure you have this, this will look nice. Let's make this wall a bat color. That looks nice, that contrasts nice. And another thing you can do is if you grab both of these, you can turn it like that, and you'll have an actual nice looking box. Now let us make a carpet by going to a lighter shade, and boom, now we have a carpet. All right, door design that I use. I use different door designs for a lot of my builds. 
but the door design I'm going to use here is my basic door design, where you take a few blocks, color these this color, yes, if it doesn't match the wall color, if it matches the wall color, you can change it, I'm not going to, and then you can grab these, pull them out using that arrow, squeeze them down a bit, and then change them to the color of the actual thing, place them in like in a good orientation where you think you'd want them, and that's a simple door design, it did not take me long to build that doesn't look the best you may want to critique it to the way you want to make it look good so like if I take this boom 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 push this in like that now you have a nice little thing you can group this and then you take it and then you can go boom 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 and you can bring this down like that on top of that you can and then this door isn't very complete so we're gonna grab a circle which is and there's there is I believe six types five types of blocks there is the this block circle block cylinder block triangle block and then triangular cylinder so we're gonna use a circle block as the door handle to make a golden door. You may fade it out a bit more. Nope. Fade it a bit more. Darker. Like that. And then increase it to a higher size of hand. Yes. Nice. So now we have a door. I'm gonna make this room a bit bigger because this is very small. And also, you want to make sure you, your maps don't have to look great on the outside, but you want to make sure that they look decent. Now this is a room. You can use this room if you want to. I am going to make this the starting room for my level. And take this, put this here. I'm going to let this go in a bit. There we go. Let us make a roof, shall we? Okay, now you have this little box with a door that fits you like perfectly, right? And it's not very immersive, doesn't look very nice. That's because you need decoration in your builds to make it look nicer. I'm gonna increase the size of this door because this is a very small door. <laughs> That's better. So, I'm gonna teach you guys how to model a chair real quick. So, my design for modeling a chair is like that, and then you would do that, like that. These are different stools. I would suggest for you, personally, doing just little sticks on each side. Let's compare the player size, that's way too big. Remember to always keep comparing size to player before actually doing things, or it may not turn out the size you like. And you always want to keep checking the complexity to make sure you're not running out. So I'm going to put this like that, and like that. That is not the same color. Make sure you want your maps to look nice and good. So, like that. Maybe a bit better. Like that, yes. Now you are going to use this chair design because it is amazing of a design for you. Me? What I'm going to do, I am going to make a nice little three row ring chair. Like. And then I'm going 
to put a piece up here so it fits your head. So you can sit down in this chair and it works just like a chair. Okay, let's talk about what I'm doing as well, because I forgot to talk about that. <laughs> Sorry. So, on your controller, you have a bunch of settings. So, you have the trash button, you have this button, you have the home button, which will bring you the Oculus Home settings button, and you have this button, which doesn't do anything, and this is your player button. These things your, these things also do stuff. Like I showed, if you hold down your trigger and then pull this way, it'll make it bigger. Pull this down this way, it'll make it smaller. This, you bring it up, and then this way. Now, there's something very important about this. If you push in on the joystick in the direction, it'll do an, what we call an undo. Now, currently, these are a bit buggy. So, if I were to, like, what if, like, if somebody spammed a bunch of stuff, if you spammed a bunch of stuff and you didn't want it there, after all, you can just click the undo button a bunch of times. It'll undo all of that. So, that's helpful. So is our first chair done. So we're going to, oops, we're going to fuse this chair by grabbing it with the sphere that I showed you, and then you're going to group it. Put this there, turn it around, and now we're going to make a table model, or model, whatever you want to say it. So then we're going to have this, like this, and I'm going to make a quick table model that only takes that many pieces, and I'm going to make the entire thing one solid color, this color. So now you have a table with a chair that works nice. So you're in a boxed room, let's, okay, let's talk about different things real quick, real quick, one more thing about levels, and then we can get back to building level. So there are in my opinion, there is a few different types of waking levels, and they are all amazing. But some of them I prefer per over others, like the box level, which is a level that is a giant box. I did that wrong. Anyway, it's a box, and you go from this way to this way, and this is connected. Imagine these are connected. Box level, that's what it is. So, we're going to make a B for box. That's a six. So, another type we have of levels is like open area levels, like grand spectacles where it looks really nice, this giant open area. It's this giant level and it'll have like parkour here and then here and then maybe we'll have like a grapple right here. And what they'll do is they may just have giant open scenes or they'll have walls where they put it like this. And then they'll put this there. So this will be, we'll call this the open And now I'm going to teach you about mixed, which in my opinion is the best what to do, because it is most literally both of them combined together. And this is my tutorial, so this isn't official, but this is a good tutorial on things. So if basically, if you take these together and then ungroup this, we have the mixed level which is where you start in a box and then you enter into a more open sort of space so i'm gonna make an m for mixed so those are the three different type of levels in my opinion those are the only important types of levels 
You have other types of levels, but those are the ones that matter right now. Those are the ones we're going to use. So, right now we're making a box level. And in this level, it doesn't really do anything right now. It's still very bland, but we have some decorations. You can add more decorations to your levels if you want to. Personally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some different, like, chairs and places. Make it look a bit, you know, nice. <laughs> I'm going to add a fireplace right here. So, I see a lot of fireplaces built, and a lot of people build them not very neatly. Put it that way. I'm going to teach you how to neatly build a fireplace. Or how I would neatly build a fireplace. So, take like a color that you want. I'm going to use darkest brick, which is like a brick color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this piece as a little open piece right here. And then I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to stretch it out and make it like a little blocky, blocky. And then I'm going to do that a few times and I'm going to change the color of this. Red, orange, yellow. Now it's doing this weird glitchy effect since it's at the same angle. So I'm going to change the angles up a bit and I'm going to insert it right here, make it a bit bigger. Maybe even place a few things over here. Oops. And then right here. Okay. That's a neat little fireplace that we have. What we're going to do with this is we're going to bring this out a bit. Bring it out a bit. And we're going to add a chimney using the fireplace. So surprising. I'm going to use a classical wood chimney. And then what we do, we're going to take this sphere object and we're going to shrink it and place it in random durations for a few effects. And then we're going to change the colors gray. I'm going to use this color. I'm going to use this color. I'm going to use maybe even that color. And then that's going to be solid white. And we're going to grab all of this, group it together, and then squeeze it down like right over the chimney. And then do that a few times with a bit of like randomness and deletion like so and then you have chimney smoke so what we're going to do for this next part of the level i am going to make a openable door or not openable but an open door so i'm going to make And what this is going to do is it's going to make a nice little thing effect, which is like it shows the effect of an open door. And right now we have this door, and we're going to take it, and I'm going to fuse the door together. I'm going to grab it, and I'm going to turn it. Now, we're going to do something like this, and boom. So now we have an open door. Now if you want to, you can add some hinges, but be careful because you do have a decently low amount of complexity. For other people, I can't even use 1500 to build like a full level <laughs> for my builds, which is kind of embarrassing. So, now what we're going to do, we're going to make an open little area. And I'm going to teach you how to do actual good exterior design. Let's, so we're going to, oops, let's push this in a bit more. And.
and let's make this look good. So we want this box to look good from the inside and the outside. So what's the solution to this? We could keep it a box and make it look weird. And it would be fine if you wanted to do that. I'd be fine with that. And we could also, another way we could do it, make a roof using 45. And we could mold a little rooftop here which has pieces like this and then like that and you could have a little roof now this does look very ugly from my opinion but it is very basic roof design and then you can bring you can take this up take this effect up then you extend this chimney up. Now you have a little roof. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take this. And I'm going to stretch it out. Like that. Like that. Like that. That. And that. Yes. And then we're going to pull this this way. Now we have this little roof piece. I'm going to make it this color as like a little example. Now, in my opinion, this is not nice. And the way you can make it look nicer is you can add little wood textures and brick textures all over it. So I'm going to teach you how to make nice little design pieces. Too. So in my opinion, a good wood texture would look kind of like this. Nice, strong, wooden feel makes it look very wooden and robust now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a brick design using a few bricks scattered around we're going to make it look nice and random we're going to grab make it a bit lighter than the thing Oop, push it in a bit And we're going to have a bit of roof contrast here. So, boom, boom. Another tip that I would love to give you. Be careful whenever you're selecting things, guys. It is kind of difficult to get things the right position. So, be careful whenever doing that. Yeah, that'll make it look nice and ripe. So I have this little house, and we're going to expand it this way, and it covered the floor, so we're going to bring it down just a bit. Now I'm going to make a frozen terraria. So how I'm going to do that, I'm going to make this neon, so it gives it more of a nice effect, and I'm going to bring this down, like about to there. And I'm going to show you how to make a house up straight boom boom like that boom 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 like that and some things you may want to do fix how your level looks from the outside don't make it look sloppy make it look nice right now mine looks sloppy i will fix that Take time in your levels, make it look nice, according to you. Make it look as good as you want it to be, as bad as you want it to be. Now, that looks decent, I would say. So now we're going to add some support beams right here. We're going to shrink it, and we're going to boom, boom, boom. Add a few of these around. There is only one problem with adding these. They may go through the floor, but in this scenario, I was lucky they didn't go through the floor. And what I'm gonna do for this is I'm going to keep it like that. And I'm gonna add a few hills here and there to make it look a bit more robust. 
We're broken. Oh. And then I'm going to add some terrain around the edges, and then I'm going to end the video. So. And then I'm going to teach you about sky, of course, and then the video will end. So, random sky generation, like that, that, and that. Maybe even a lower one, like that. We want it to look nice without people, you know, escaping the map. That's not what we want. We don't want people escaping. So what we're going to do... We're gonna make it nice by doing this, right? So we have these little cliffy things, and we're going to make this a bit grayer so it fits the ground a bit more. Do that, and then we're going to grab all of this. I'm going to fuse it real quick. One more mountain. All right, now you fuse it all. that and then you can make like a little road back here if you want to I am going to do that too I'm gonna make little mountains right here and then we'll have a little road behind the house going this way or as far as you want it to go. I'm going to keep it like that for now. So now we have this little nice looking terrain. The sky doesn't really fit right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, you're going to open your menu, go to ambience, and go to, you can change the color of these. I'm going to change it to a slight blue offset with a baby blue effect so right there and i'm going to do the same thing pretty much for the sky so now we have like this nice effect now you can mess with the fog to make it look as foggy as you want i think i'm going to keep it on there turn it off whenever you're building the the sun you can have at any altitude point mine i'm going to ha i'm going to keep it at altitude right there and I'm going to keep it sized like right there and I'm going to move it right there. There we go. That looks pretty nice. So now we have the sun facing at you. And we have some blue effects on the ground. Nice shadows. Let's make a few pine trees and then that'll be it for this video so pine trees are pretty easy turn this make this boom I'm gonna make colored pine trees dark colored with a snowy top and a light effect like that I'm gonna push this in a bit more like that. Now you have a tree. And it looks nice. So I'm gonna put a few of these trees over here or there. You know. I'll put some of them up here. Now don't waste complexity on things that most likely aren't gonna be seen. But do waste complexity on things that are going to make your nice map look more immersive. So what I'm going to do here, at this point, and I'm going to make a little porch. Right like that. And I'm going to make it out of wooden blocks. So I'm going to separate it like this. Maybe a bit closer. Like that. And then I'm going to color it in this color. To add a bit of support to these to this thing maybe like because right now it is defying the laws of gravity which you can even grab which is nice
gonna add these and then turn them into supports. And then I'm going to make a bottom cover for these so they don't look like they are freaking floating. Now we have little house thing. Add different styles of coloring. Make it look a bit nicer if you want to. I'm gonna keep it like this. And now I'm gonna add a bit more railing. Very simple technique style. Just gonna grab that. I'm going to do it like this. And don't, you don't have to follow me completely. Just, you know, make this level yours. Make it your level. Make it a level you wanted it to look like whenever you first clicked on this video. So, add a few more. And I'm gonna make this little bottom deck ground thing. Oops. Like that. Okay, now we have this little house thing. And look at that. You have made all of this. Hopefully, if you were following along, you have made this so far. Now I gotta say, I am pretty proud. There is one thing we need to talk about. Saving a level. You want to? Oh, you do. You're going to want to save. Title it. I'm going to title this Frozen Cavern. No, not cavern. Sorry, Frozen. I'm going to title it the Search of to type today. Bro, for the Tempel. 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 There we go. So, you put your name, your career. Of course, I'm the only career, so I'm going to put my name. Give it a quick description, you don't have to right now. This will tell you how many checkpoints to put in the map. The max is 100, the lowest is 1. Or no, sorry, the lowest is 0, the max is 100. And you should be pretty good to go. You may want to fix some bugs, but that is going to be my episode 1 of how to build an actual good grab map and may even get it verified. Yes, our goal is so you can get your first, or maybe your 20th, or 10th, or 50th, doesn't matter, so you can get a verified level out of this. That is my hope, is that you will get a verified level. So, yes, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I, a part two will be coming out soon.